Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this lecture, we will be focusing on free roots and bound roots with some explanations on FXs and their functions. Let's start with our lecture. Now, let's say something about types of morphemes, but these are not those types that we discussed free morpheme and bound morpheme, inflection, lexical, etc. These are the types by its roots. Not all morphemes are equally central to the formation of words. They are, there are two types, roots and FXs. A root is irreducible core of word with absolutely nothing else attached to it. It is a part that must always be present. Every word has at least one root and they are at the center of the word derivational process. They carry the basic meaning from which the rest of the sense of a word can be derived. Morphemes such as chair, green, ballad, father, etc. are roots, but they all happen to be free forms, independent words. On the other hand, there are roots like sig in segment, gen in genetic, brave in brevity, which cannot stand alone as words. They are called bound roots morphemes or bound bases, is distinct from free root morphemes or free bases. Most of the bound roots found in English today are of classical origin. Some of them are of Germanic origin. What happened with these bound roots? To be completed bound bases require that another morpheme be attached to them. This additional morpheme may be either another root or an fx. If it is another root, the result is a compound. They all contain two roots. Affixes carry very little of the core meaning of a word. Mainly, affixes have the effect of slightly modifying the meaning of the stem. A stem is either a root or a root plus an affix, or more than one root with or without affixes, to which more affixes or inflections can be attached. This process of adding affixes, affixes is known as affixation and it is one of the two most fundamental processes in word formation. The other one is compounding. The stem is that part of a word that is in existence before any inflectional affixes. Look at this work, worker. Now, if we add S, the worker becomes stem for S before the inflectional process. A base is any unit whatever to which affixes of any kind can be added. In other words, all roots are bases. Bases are called stem only in the context of, of inflectional morphology. All morphemes which are not root are affixes. Affixes differ from roots in three ways. They do not form words by themselves. They have to be added onto a stem. Their meaning in many instances is not as clear as and specific as is the meaning of roots and many of them are almost completely meaningless. Compared with total number of roots which is very large, the number of affixes is relatively small, a few hundred at most. In English, all the productive affixes are either attached at the end of the stem suffixes or at the front of the stem's prefixes. Some common prefixes are, look at this, co-occur, occur together, midnight, mistreat, return, action, look at, act or active, child kiss, childhood, etc. Functions of affixes. Affixes have two quite different functions. The first is to participate in the formation of new words. The affixes which do this are called derivational affixes. The other time, a type of affixes which does not participate in word formation process are called inflectional affixes. The most typical inflectional affixes in most languages serves to indicate which word is the subject of the sentence or which word is the object of, of the word. Since inflectional affixes are nothing more than the markers of sentence structures and, and organizations, they are not involved in the derivation of new words and hence of no further interest in the present context. Some other remarks on affixes. 
affixes in one language may correspond to separate lexemes in another. If both inflectional and derivational suffixes occur attached to a given base, derivational suffixes follow more closely the base, for example, childishly. In many languages, prefixes may be either derivational or inflectional. In English, prefixes are derivational. There are some types of affixes. Circumfix, if a prefix and suffix act together to realize one morpheme and do not occur separately in German, look at this. Infix, if it is added inside a root or a base. Interfix, a kind of infix, it is placed between the two elements of a compound. For example, look at this German examples in English, we do not have it. Suprafix is realized by different stress in a word. For example, discount, discount important and important zero morph is there is no transparent morph to mark a regular grammatical distinction for example deer and deer fish and fish sheep and sheep in plural there is zero mark you do not see it but the plural is meant thank you so much for watching this video